So I'm here today with the artist Bong Pao Panit, who is here because he has installed his artwork from the Emma collection called Line Writing, which he first made in 1994. And he made it for this building. Um, the work is in the Emma collection and the building that we're in today is the Royal Hospital Kamenum. It's a 17th century building in um, a Baroque style, which was built as a military hospital. So uh, what I wanted to talk to Vong today about was um, this very special relationship with Emma and how that relationship first came about with um, your slightly earlier work, um, Neon Rice Field, which was shown here um, when it was on loan to Emma from the Weltkunst Foundation collection. And you install that here, is that right, in the early 90s? Yes, I mean, when the um, <coughs> Weltkunst collection came to Dublin, uh, I was asked to come and install or to oversee, to come and oversee the installation of Neon Rice Field. And it's during that period that I, I have um, uh, became quite close to Declan McGonagall, uh, who was yeah. then the director of the Irish Museum of Modern Art. And following that trip, uh, Declan had suggested that you know, maybe there, there may be a potential to do a commission for the, the Irish Museum of Modern Art. And that's how it all started. Yeah. Um, that was 20 years ago now, it's 2014 now, and um, I'm just curious, I suppose, about the, the process that was involved in coming up with a, a new piece, a continuation of your existing practice, working with neon, with language, and also responding to particular sites or particular places. Mm -hmm. um, and you must have looked at some of these rooms here, because these gallery rooms here are uh, we have wooden floorboards, we've, the original fireplaces are here, and what you've done with Neon, with line writing, excuse me, is you, you've ripped up mm -hmm. the fabric of, mm -hmm. of those gallery spaces. Mm -hmm. So, um, was, was that a very uh, daring thing at the time, or what was the response? Well, daring, um, one never think in that way at all. I think it, it's more to do with because at that particular time, uh, what I was interested, interested in was the um, notion of cultural identity. So we're dealing with uh, language, we're dealing with identity, we, we were dealing with um, um, uh, legacy, a cultural legacy. And the neons and the Laotian script that was part of the, this work uh, there were ideas that, that I already, you know, I was already exploring. Um, mentioning Declan, uh, I think at one point everything was open, or you know, uh, I could easily uh, offer something outside in the park. At that time, the park wasn't, you know, uh, designed at all. It was com completely empty in that sense. You mean the, uh, the formal the, garden? The formal here. garden. Yeah, they um, were being so they were restored to their former. That's right. Um, so there, very planted, yeah. very, uh, it was a blank canvas, yeah. and what really That's sort of interesting. interested me was the, as I said, the, the legacy, the cultural legacy, and the building itself. Yeah. That you know, carries heavily that that element. Yeah. And so really, with this piece, you're you're kind of exposing what was underneath. It's like an excavation where you're 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 looking under. What, yes. What the current. Um, Uses. Yeah, I wanted to offer an in, in intervention um, that is not such, uh, th that is not simply uh, uh, something that you attach to the wall or you, 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 you put it on the plinth. So, so it, I, I felt that it, it, need, it needed uh, something that uh, somehow um, deal more directly with the building mm. and the floorboard, the underneath the hidden world of uh, the foundation of the building, yeah. uh, I felt it was you know, the, the right of direction to explore. Yeah. Um, yeah. And um, so following that, that discussion I had with Declan, I then proposed um, the, the concept. Uh, 
And at that time, you know, as you said, would that, was that daring or yes. not? Uh, it, it did cross my mind that it may be uh, difficult because we're dealing with a listed building yeah. uh, and you know, knowing all the restrictions. Uh, and and um, the, uh, the proposal was you know, uh, once in the hand of the Irish Museum, Museum of Modern Art. Uh, there was a, a few months of silence and then one day we, we got in touch with um, uh, Declan just to find out how things were progressing. And he, his answer was, he, he wasn't very surprised at all. He says, yeah, you, you've got the, you know, you got, you got the commission, just, you know, let's, let's go ahead and start yeah. with it. So it was a, a very exciting response. Yeah. I think it was a really exciting <coughs> time in the museum's history, and it's, it's quite nice at the moment in the programme, we're, we're kind of revisiting that uh, mm -hmm. history with a number of the works that were mm -hmm. made for, for the site, made in response to these, um, uh, to the history here, mm -hmm. to the colonial origins of the building, which mm -hmm. was a, a military hospital for British soldiers, so to, to put these works back in again is quite mm -hmm. interesting because as you, you touched on it there that it's not just something you take out and mm -hmm. put it on a plinth, it's quite a complex installation um, and we're very fortunate that you were able to come and revisit this work mm -hmm. and work with us here to, to make a, a slightly different presentation mm -hmm. in that the, there are six lines of neon and six Laotian words. Mm -hmm. The words this time are in slightly different configurations so it seems to me that um, you're still responding and being quite gestural with the piece, it seems quite painterly. And for this installation here, um, it was a decision to, to leave these three entrance rooms completely empty, um, which I think uh, has, you know, today, just seeing it finished and seeing the, the, the beautiful colour uh, in the walls behind and seeing the effect of daylight and just how important is the, the the space around, the, the exterior, the light level, that seems to be extremely important for this work. The, uh, it is very important. Uh, as I said, you know, it's not just a, a direct response to the, the building or to the site. It's not really just a site-specific work. As you can see, the work bleeds uh, in a, you know, uh, <laughs> It, it kind of seeps out through, it the, seeps out, uh, through the, the cracks door, and the, the that's right, any openings. Yeah. Uh, and that's yeah. what interested me so that the work can exist at any, at any level. So it, you know, it's constantly evading uh, mm -hmm. possibility of being pinned down. Uh, um, yeah. And I think that's what makes that work somehow contemporary. Uh, it, it, you know, 20 years after seeing it up and on display again, I, I don't think that you know the work has aged, yeah. which is incredible in yeah. that sense. We did <coughs> talk about that a little bit yesterday, mm -hmm. just uh, as it was first, you know, fully switched on, mm -hmm. and just about you know the, the timelessness of it mm -hmm. as a work. And as a, I think for me, it seems like almost that the, the history of the building is is part of it, mm -hmm. and, and creates this very kind of strange slippage of time where this is a contemporary piece in a very historic building, but the piece itself is, you know, it's 20 years old now, does it still feel current or, but I think it has this um, wonderful timelessness mm -hmm. to it, mm -hmm. and it, um, it really engages with uh, a clash mm -hmm. which sometimes occurs in your work where you, you seem to bring two very disparate materials together, you've worked with rice and with rubber and bamboo and frequently working with not with light. Mm -hmm. um, is that um, something about trying to create paradox in the meaning of the work? I, I like bringing, bringing in together two or three different materials. Um, I think it's the friction between this, these mm -hmm. elements that create what you may call a third meaning. Mm -hmm. And that's what you know, makes the work interesting. Mm -hmm. So again, uh, the fact that this time you have allowed the luxury to you know, create all these empty spaces so that there's creating a, a kind of journey towards the, yeah. the, 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 the piece at the end of the, the corridor. I mean, it's just add another dimension to the work and it's something that you know, 
that, that's, that's what it's, the, the work is about. That's yeah. a, a permanent um, uh, um, possibility of reinventing itself and re, there's a possibility of rereading or reinterpretation. Yeah. And, and that's, that's, that's crucial in the yeah. work. Um, and and, and the, the use of different um, elements, Lyshan script, the neons, the floorboard, the joys, the architecture. I think it's 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 um, it's it's bringing all this energy together, and at the same time, there's always possibility of escaping. You're dealing with the building, but suddenly there's other element that takes you out of the building as well, mm -hmm. and that's 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 what you know. Uh, I, that's what I find interesting with this piece. And was it interesting for you to see it again after all this time? I mean, do you do you miss a work when it's <laughs> left you and gone into its own? Um, yes and no. I mean, you don't really miss the work because the, a work exists usually because of previous work, and the existence of that 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 work is the you know. Uh, the, 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 the will create another work. So there's, yeah. there's a constant movement the there. There's a connection. So what you create, you just let it be and then you move on. So it's not quite... Um, um, I'm attached to, to the work, but not in a, a, a possessive way. It's, yeah. it's, you know, it's, it's, yeah. it's, I mean, it's a I kind of reminder. Yeah, I know from Which working is, with you over the years, the gem, mm. This uh, not possessing the work is something quite interesting with with work like this, which is installed. It's it's built in the room, and we've worked together on Neon Ricefield a number of times mm -hmm. here at IMA, and then the piece has travelled to um, Guangzhou mm -hmm. and also to Sheffield, the Glass Centre. And our IMA technicians went and mm -hmm. installed the piece there with with your input and correspondence. So I think that's something very interesting in terms of this type of uh, sculpture uh, installation work, which is, it's um, it has certain things that are stored and kept, and then replaced. But it needs to be made each time mm -hmm. in, in the particular space. So sometimes it re responds to a very different um, scale of building. Um, is it, do you think that with this particular line writing piece that it is uh, uh, is is this a work that is really embedded with the, this particular room, or might it exist in another place, or <laughs> is that? <laughs> I, I, I really think that this 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 piece suits this building yeah. uh, better than anywhere else mm -hmm. at the moment. Mm -hmm. I have created a, a variation of of this work. Um, uh, uh, for the Apple Foundation in in Holland, in in, in um, Amsterdam, and that piece then has been shown in. Um, I think I know the work. Various Biennale South of it. It's a hover of yeah, the floor, it and it comes to the wall floor. and yeah. goes up the wall. So that's so. that kind of continuation you were talking about mm -hmm. earlier, where it's almost like one work leads on and takes that's right. your work in a kind of a, an ongoing dialogue with. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's right. So the, the re reason why I still, I'm still attached to this one is almost because if, if you uh, go back through that, 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 uh, that line of work, yeah. uh, line writing is almost right at the beginning of the starting point. Mm. You know, that's why it's, you know, it, it, it has a, 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 a favorite. Close to your heart. That's right. Place in my, yeah. in my memory. And ours too. It's been uh, <laughs> Great response so far, just uh, just uh, with colleagues and people who are kind of aware that we're we're working towards um, bringing this to public attention again after 17 years. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it was first installed in 20 years ago, and then mm -hmm. it was reinstalled mm -hmm. three years later. Mm -hmm. But it hasn't been shown since then, so mm -hmm. I'm really pleased to to have it here. Yes, I, I am. You know, more than honoured to have the work on back on display again. Yeah. And I know that you know, at one point we were toying with the idea you know, how, how nice uh, it would be to create a piece that you put under 
the floor and then you don't want to see you put the floor back yes. and a floorboard back but it's been you know as you said 17 years so yeah. it's nice that you know yeah. it's all up and i think and that's sure. interesting isn't it that you know this idea that the work could be stored underneath mm -hmm. that people wouldn't be able to see it but practically i think it's not that that did happen <laughs> if, I, if i'm correct mm. um the the piece remained under the floorboard but during that period of storage or mm -hmm. when it was not shown, did some of the glass break because of movement of the floorboards? Or Possibly, yeah. I, yeah. Think, um, I think that some of the glass may have broken because of... Uh, yeah, it's a living it's, building. Yeah, it's, it's, a, you know, it's, it's wood to move yeah, and it's a, yeah. you know, there's the heat yeah. and the warmth and the, the cold and humidity. Yeah. So, uh, it's I think it's, it's just an interesting thing to look at in terms of <laughs> How we, how we collect and exhibit work, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. particularly, you know, we, the IMA collection now is 20 years mm -hmm. old as well, and um, the work seems to have kind of, um, it, it seems to embody some of those very interesting questions about collecting um, mm -hmm. modern and contemporary art that use unusual materials or use a particular site. Mm -hmm. um, so one, a word you use to describe the work um, and its its configuration in the joists is the, the word valley. And then you, you you described how the the piece seemed to be in, a, in kind of a, a valley shape, and it seems to me that the the work relates or links back always to the body, both to the artist's body and how the work is made, its written language, but also the the body of the viewer mm -hmm. and how the how it is very much an experience, particularly with uh, this configuration, I think, where you walk through mm -hmm. three empty rooms. Could you um, perhaps describe what it is that you, th you experience or you, th you hope um, mm -hmm. people experience mm -hmm. when, they, when they do come into the space? I think li line writing uh, was conceived uh, as a piece of that, that you said the notion of awareness, awareness of ourselves as the viewer uh, approaching uh, the room where the, the work is installed and the awareness of uh, the glow of the light, there's a, a scale of the, in that room um, and also there's a sound element to it because mm. there's a constant buzz, electrical buzz from the mm. neon and transformers. So all this, you can't really see it on, uh, on the camera or, or, or on the photographic uh, image, but, but it's, you know, it, it tells you that that experience, that journey uh, is, is very important. Um, the fact that the work attracts you mm. to that room, mm. that, uh, that's that, 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 that play of attraction, and also there's an element of danger. Yes. Uh, the fact that it's showing the bare ground mm. of the building, so that showing the hidden aspect. All this, you know, create all this um, uh, complexity of uh, feeling, emotion, and, and ideas. Mm. And for that uh, to happen, you need to be there physically on the yeah. side. Yeah. Um, and also the, uh, the interaction between the neon lights and the daylight, mm -hmm. the amount of natural light, depending on the, the weather of that particular day you visit the, uh, the, the museum. Mm -hmm. um, I, 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 I expect that you know, one will experience the work very differently. If you come on a grey day, mm -hmm the light will be quite um, yeah. uh, fixed, yeah. the, the, the light so quality. But if you come on a sunny or cloudy day, the natural light keeps changing all the time and, and you, you know, your eyes will try to adjust mm. to the, the light yeah. giving out by, by the neons. And it will create this, this breathing yes. effect. So the glow keep changing it, yes. its intensity. Yes. So th there's a lot of you know thing that take place when you're yeah. there. So the awareness of, of ourselves and the work and 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 the, the building mm. and the journey, the, the, the journey approach. Through, I think, is good. Mm. Um, through 
three empty rooms before you arrive to the work. Yeah. I think it's quite de very, you know, very, uh, um, you know, it's it's a very nice idea and very interesting proposition. Yes. I think um, yeah. most of the time now you visit an art museum or, or art collection institution, we tend to cramp mm. lots of yes. artwork into one room and sometimes it doesn't you know, do justice to the artwork. Yeah, it's, it does seem <coughs> quite luxurious or generous to give a lot of space to a single work, but I agree with you. I think that sometimes um, what we're looking for is a moment of pause when mm. we we experience a work um, and I think sometimes a work requires this pause and this mm -hmm. journey. Um, you also see the piece from the outside of the building mm -hmm. um, so it, and it's framed in a very particular way mm -hmm. in, the, in the archway of the colonnade um, and that the daylight once you open the door does, does have a really mm -hmm. big impact on the, mm -hmm. the light within the room and the, mm -hmm. the, the sensation that that you feel when you're in the room and um, there's almost a, a, a sense that there's a, a heat but there isn't there isn't mm. any heat mm -hmm. coming from the work but somehow your your mind and your eye seem to put together these colors and this uh, glow as a warmth mm -hmm. that kind of envelops you in mm -hmm. the room but uh, the neon itself is not hot it's it not hot. Really that's right. Any heat. No, but, uh, it's quite a that's right. It looks a little bit threatening, but at the yes. same time, it's yeah. very peaceful as well. Yeah. Um, and and during that time, when I you know when I look when I had to judge something that I just uh, produced, I tend to look at the work by thinking, saying to myself, is this work quite enough or not? Quite in the sense that reach a, po a moment of moment where it's completely silent that mm -hmm. it, you then allow it allows you to start thinking and reacting to us mm -hmm. uh, and I think line writing has that element of yeah. you know that, that silent moment yeah. when you arrive in the room yeah so it reset you on your clock in that yeah. sense <laughs> okay great thank you Vaughan. well thank you it's a pleasure <laughs>